Darling in the Franks is a fine example of what modern anime have become and why they are throwaway trash. They are doing nothing but reusing all their ideas instead of having new ones. It is something that is very different from anything else taking inspiration from a lot of mech series. It's something that's very saturated. And on top of that, they don't even do a good job at rehashing the same ideas. They're not trying to improve or refine them. They just make them more creepy, sexual and edgy. And I do want to give props to the writers of this for not going down a cliché route. He grabbed her pants, so he's walking around accidentally with it. They also write on the name of who made them instead of how good they are on their own, and do their best to keep you interested with how absurd they are, by constantly making up memes and crazy situations, without actually caring about the quality of the script or good characterization. Darling in the Fran is being made from a collaboration of two famous studios. It's bound to be something good. It's actually a bunch of iconic and famous animators and people that worked on anime for a long time now coming together to work on the show. I feel like that's what everybody's gonna be focusing in on. The show does its best to make you hate everything from the very beginning. You get the scene where they establish the main character, and all you get is a blank self-insert who recites emo poetry, and there is an injured bird that symbolizes something. First impressions are crucial for getting to like a character, and instead of giving you an interesting personality, or a cool design, or a sad backdrop, they throw in stolen quotes and symbolism, which have nothing to do with him as a person you are supposed to like for being a person. All of them characters that had their like, names dropped, they were all named after flowers. There's obviously some flower symbolism going on here in this series, and it's bound to be something good. There's some really thought-provoking scenes that really just makes you think... This is all nothing but pretentious of a thinking replacing characterization. How can you still care after that? Same thing with the main female character. The establishing scene is about her being naked and crazy. What is there to care about her after that besides the doujin you will look for when you want to masturbate? The main character that carried this first episode was the main female character, Zero Tooth, when she was, you know, taking a dip and swimming. Oh my god, I love her personality. She has the potential to be best girl of 2018. The funny part is that the majority of Mulder and Anim fans are fine with this trash, because they gave up on expecting to watch something good. Most of the community was calling this abomination the best title of the year, just so they can be part of the seasonal hype, write essays about symbolism, make theories about what might happen, only to lose interest as soon as it's over so they can move to the next trash that is about to come out. It's definitely going to be one of those shows that set the tone for what to expect from this year. Can anything possibly beat such a quality series? And it's definitely a way to start off anime of 2018 with a bang. Oh, what a great start. <laughs> But until that happens, they will be kept preoccupied with two seasons of boring one-dimensional characters, each one defined by type rather than an interesting personality, as they spend their time trying to understand sex. Just by this setup, you know this is bad from the get-go, since everything is defined by numbers and percentages instead of, you know, personalities. They're all given numbers as a name. Well, they're supposed to have a message there, and obviously has really high numbers when you look at the statistics and all that. The characters have nothing to do outside of piloting wife bots by doing doggy-style sex. This gets old very fast, since you don't give a shit about action scenes that involve awful mecha designs and sex metaphors. Plus, the characters have no backdrop story, since they haven't done anything interesting in their whole lives. Their social interaction is limited to talking to equally flat people like themselves. Also, there are so many of them, it becomes a snore fest to tolerate an episode dedicated to each one of them, especially when you know only the main two characters matter in the story. Most others don't contribute to the plot in any way, they are just there to waste episodes on sexual innuendos. You wanna ride me, huh? I can feel myself getting deeper inside of you. Like, yo, like, yo, like, yo! It could have been a decent watch if it stayed that way and didn't try to have a plot or deeper meanings, but it did and it backfired horribly. For most of the episodes, there were no explanations for why they are fighting monsters or why the world looks like a huge desert. The writers were constantly teasing an answer to all that, and to the most part did nothing to prepare the audience for it, since most of the episodes were wasted on the sexual frustrations of inept waifu bot pilots. All the emphasis was placed on vapid love triangles, cheating, cuckolding, and shameless references to older mecha. That became the only thing the audience of this abomination was caring for. 
The series borrows pretty liberally from past Gainax and Trigger properties in, shall we say, less than original ways. In fact, when it started, the homage was kind of part of the appeal for a lot of viewers, at least up to the point where it became obvious that the show was a little light on original ideas. Evidence for how little thought was placed into the making of this cast can be found when observing what happens to them once they manage to resolve the conflict they were written with during their inception. The single trait that was defining them ceases to exist, and they become blank pieces of paper, since whatever specks of personality they had was defined by their conflict. Essentially, the moment their emotional baggage is lifted, they stop having a personality. After reuniting with Hero, she's just nice to everyone all the time and doesn't stir up any conflict ever. It's like the writers think that being in a relationship somehow magically solves all of your emotional hang-ups and personality quirks. Eventually, the explanations for the mystery arrived in a rushed and retarded way, completely changing the atmosphere of the show, and as if by magic made everybody to realize the show was crap all along, despite that being obvious from the very beginning. After that, everybody was calling it a train wreck and left them wondering, how did Trigger, the savior of anime, ruin the potentially best anime of the year? <laughs> This train wreck, which I once thought would be one of the best shows this year, didn't just go off the rails, it somehow deforced into an alternate reality where the rails never existed in the first place. Some try to defend this horseshit by saying previous Trigger and Gainax series were also becoming bizarre as time went on, and that it's unfair to hit Darling when it was constantly reusing ideas from them. Those defenders are of course idiots who don't see how said older anime had far fewer characters, with far more personality and backdrop stories, and had much smoother transitions by not wasting as many episodes on worthless characters, thus being left with enough duration to work things through a lot better. Darling in the Franks is not a show about pointy-haired kids in rad sunglasses making bold declarations about digging equipment with anime bravado. It's about sad teenagers arguing and crying and embracing each other, and most of what happens in the last few episodes is totally incongruous with that tone. But hey, this is a modern anime, so who gives a shit about any of that? The point is to forget it the moment it's over and move to the next train wreck.